run into any more kings on this trip? I reckon not. Yeah, well, that's all right with me, then. Don't it surprise you, Huck, how kings carry on so? No, it don't. Well, I tell you, these kings of ours are regular rap scallions. That's what they is. They're regular rap scallions. It's all in the breed of kings, Jim. All kings is mainly rape scallions, as far as I can make out. That's all? You read about him once, you'll see. Henry VIII, when he was in bloom, he was a blossom. Makes this one look like a Sunday school superintendent. He used to marry a new wife every day, then chop off her head the next morning. And he'd do it just as indifferent as if he was ordering up eggs. He'd say, fetch up Nell Gwen. Nell Gwen would come up next morning, chop off her head, and he'd chop it off. Fetch up Jane Shore, he says. Jane Shore would come up next morning, Ugh. chop off her head, and he'd chop it off. <laughs> Ring up Fair Rosamum, he says. Fair Rosamum answers the door. Next morning, ah! chop off her head. And he chopped it off. And he made every one of them tell him a tale every night till he had hogged a thousand and one tales that way. And then he put them all down in a book. Called it the Doomsday Book, which was a good name and stated the case. You don't know King's Jim like I do. This old rip of iron is one of the cleanest I've struck in history. Take them all around. They're a mighty ornery lot. It's the way they're raised. I want some more coffee. We's out of coffee, your good graciousness. Shall we? A royal self? Hmm? We shall. Come on there, boy. Come on, get up there. Come, Come on, on, sit down. I ain't feeling entirely well, your lordship. I thought I'd stay here and lie in today. Yeah, lie in my eyelashes. You mean to slip off of the raft? I don't need to be tied up. I can hide myself up real good. Look, I'm doing this to protect you. Hmm? It ain't gonna be that bad. There. Now, if anyone finds you here, you just moans and groans like you're real sick, and they won't bother none with you. Hmm? Boy. for your, your patronage tonight. The, the single most sublime bit of lyric writing in all our voluminous literature. The most profoundly serious insight into the Schumann comedy. Hamlet's soliloquy. And <clears throat> to be or not to be. That is the bare bodkin that makes calamity of so long life. For who would fardels bear till Burnham would to come to dance in a but that the fear of something after death murders the innocent sleep and makes us rather sling the arrows of outrageous fortune than fly to others that we know not of? Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking. Oh, I would thou couldst, for who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the law's delay, and the quietest, shh, which is pain. 
pens might take in the dead waste and middle of the night when churchyards yawn in customary suits of solemn black. And thus, the native hue of resolution, like the poor cat in the adage, is sickled o'er with care. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, but soft you, the fair Ophelia, Ope not thy ponderous and marble jaws, but get thee to a nunnery! Go! And all this sublime theater stuff, Bill Gordon. These Arkansas dunkheads ain't up to Shakespeare. I'm fair done in with all this dancing, prancing around. I know what they want. Low comedy. Worse than low comedy. And they're gonna get it. King, I can bear. Things sure is different with them on the raft. I wish I'd never set eyes on them. Anyways, kings is kings, and you gotta make allowances. This one do smell so like the nation. Well, they all do, Jim. We can't help the way a king smells. History don't tell, no way. But how's it do? He's a tolerable likely man in some ways. Yes, well, a duke's different. But not very different. When this one here is drunk, ain't no nearsighted man could tell him from a king. Well, anyways, I, I don't have no hankering for no more of them. I've had all I can stand. I suppose it's still that snake skin working its magic against us. I sure am tired, Huck. I sure am tired. Ladies and children, not admit <laughs> That line don't fetch him in. I don't know. <laughs> When the laughter stops and the audience starts out clapping and shouting for more, you make sure that back door is wide open. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Yeah, good. Well, get over there. Get ready. <laughs>
trying to slip out on us, are you, you pop? Eh? Tired of our company, are Tell you? Tell your majesty! You stay where you are, nigger. I warn you, majesty, please don't. Well, what's the idea then? Come on, quick, or I'll set the living daylights out of you. There was a man back there, and he had a gun. And he said if I weren't to take off at a run, he was going to put a bit of lead through my ear. So naturally, I didn't dispute him. that boy, idiot. This little traitor was just going to leave us yeah, there. Yeah, like he was going to run away on me. Come on, boy, show off. Be quick about it. Come on, come on, hop in there. I wasn't running out. I thought you was right behind me. I know me. what I... you thought, you treacherous no account. theater and all that prancing around. You dang near got us both strung up. Perhaps the time has come to dissolve our partnership, old man. Yeah, well, that suits me just fine. Yeah, good then, good. More coffee, boy. Yes, Your Grace. I'll leave off with that duke business. He ain't no more a duke than I am a cypress tree. And you ain't no more the dauphin than I'm the big dipper. Yeah. But at least I had enough nobility not to run out on a partner and leave him in the lurch with the rotten apple. Scallions want kings after all, huh? I reckon not. You know, I was just sitting here thinking, huh? Things Holly is what they seem to be. Likely enough to just break your heart sometimes. Not worth breaking your heart over these hogwashes. You know, this is the first time I've ever been away from home. Well, the first time out, I was... Terribly, terribly lonesome. Then with you and Raph and freedom in sight. I don't feel so bad no more. Then we get royalty on board and I start thinking about them again. Poor little Elizabeth and Johnny. I expect I ain't gonna never see them no more. You will, just soon as you get free. What makes me feel so bad this time is I used to treat little Elizabeth so honorary. She was about four years old. She had the scarlet fever. Oh, it done something powerful, powerful, terrible. Then she come out of it. She got well again. One day she was just standing around and I, I told her, I said, girl, shut the door. She didn't move, just stood there, smiling at me. So I got mad, I said a little louder, shut the door! She didn't move, still standing there, smiling. Oh, I got boiling mad, and I looked at her and I say, I lay, I'll make you mind me. And I fetched her a slap upside the head to send her sprawling across the floor. Went into the room and I stayed about 10 minutes. Come back out. That door was still open yet. The child standing in it, tears streaming down her face. Well, I got mad and I started for her. When all of a sudden a gust of wind come up and slammed the door. Kablam! And my land, boy, that child didn't move. Huck my breath almost come out of my body. She didn't move. So I walked up behind her, real slow, and I poked my face right next to her ear. And all of a sudden I yelled, kapow! That child didn't budge. Oh God, I just 
broke down and started crying. I throwed my arms around and I said, child, you poor, 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 poor child. Lord have mercy on Jim, goes, forgive me. Because I ain't never going to forgive myself. She's just plain old deep and dumb, look. All that time I've been treating that child so. Sirs, it don't matter that you ain't kings and such. And, well, what I wants to say is, well, I was kind of glad you made it up. Because what you want on a raft is for everyone to be satisfied. Elseways, it ain't like a raft at all. But like anywhere else, ain't it? Ain't it? <laughs> you sure been at it a long time in there. Planning worse deviltry than I ever laid. Might be they're planning to rob a store or a bank or go into the counterfeit money business. Well, I tell you, Huck, I don't want nothing to do with such actions. Me neither. We're gonna land below that town. Yes, sir. We're gonna put on another show tomorrow. The burning shame again? Oh, no, no, no. Something a, a little different. And you're gonna be the main attraction. Me? Come one, come all. Come witness the scientific magic of Dr. Yeah, Armand du Montalban of Paris. Philologist and mesmerist extraordinaire. For the insignificant price of 10 cents, I can make you insensible to all pain for a period of two months. Come on, come all. Come witness the scientific magic of Dr. Armand de Montalban, leader of heads and hearts. For the paltry sum of 25 cents, I will read the bumps on your head. Oh, go on, go on, you feel your head. Feel, feel the bumps, yeah? Well, these bumps are different on each person. I hold the key to understanding the secret of bumps and will chart your heads for, as I said, the poultry sum of 25 cents. All right. I will prove my case. May I please have a volunteer from the audience? Anyone will do. I volunteer, sir. Good boy. Just, just step up here. Ah, uh, that is it. There is nothing to worry about. I will now render this young boy insensible to any pain through the magic of mesmerism. You will be insensible to all and any pain whatsoever. You will feel the prick of pin, but it will hurt no more than the pressure of a fly.
Remember nothing of the trance. But remember, boy, you will still be insensible to pain. I thought you was gonna mesmerize me. Oh, I tried, boy, but uh, well, you just were not the proper subject. Oh, don't. Oh. What's that I feel on my arm? Sure are a powerful lot of flies around here. Oh. Uh, thank you, boy. Thank you, boy. Now, who Stop the headlight or the pain alleviated. Me and my partner found this darky hiding out in some cottonwoods about 20 miles north of here. We ain't got the time to travel south to Orleans, so we're looking for a portion of it. Ready cash right now. Where is this nigga? Bound and tied and ready to carry. Not too far from here. We're all right now. Jim? 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 You know, you ought to be thinking about sliding out, Royalty. Because them folks will find out soon enough they can still feel pinpricks well enough. How about walking it a ways? I'm getting bone tired looking at that water. Feats is good enough for me. But I know you fellas. Yeah, quite possible, young man. We travel quite a lot. It's part of our stock and trade. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nigger. Got a blue shirt on? Sure have. I seen old man Phelps and his brother carrying off this big old buck. He was a runaway. Run off somewhere down south of New Orleans. What you want with a runaway nigger? He a friend of yours? I should say not. I run into him in the woods about an hour ago, and he said if I hollered, he'd cut my livers out. Told me to lay down and stay there, and I done it. Been there ever since. I feared to come out. Ain't nothing to fear no more. Like I said, they got him. It's a good job, too. Sure is. There's a $200 reward. Like picking up money out in the road. I could have had it. If and only I'd been big enough. I saw him first, didn't I? You got a chaw to spare? No, I don't. Where'd they take him? Jail, I suppose. No, they took him to the Phelps place, about two miles below here. They gonna keep him till the owner calls for him or sends a reward. You sure you ain't got a chaw to back her? No. No, I don't. But I got a pipe. That'll do. It's a wonder how I made it this far. Someone most likely helped him. Wouldn't want to be the skin on his back if he's ever caught. Reckon he's feeling pretty. Low down and wicked by now. Stealing someone else's property. Gotta be. You go to hell for that. Reckon if it was me and someone found out, I'd be ready to get down and lick his boots for shame. This tobacco tastes like old socks. Ain't you got nothing better? <sighs> but he sure must be feeling wicked inside. Don't think I've got any insides left. Well, I'm gonna find me a char.
I know that I shouldn't have done what I've done. And I know that I should sit down right now and write a letter to Miss Watson and tell her where her nigger is. But I was brung up wicked, so I ain't much to blame. Except, of course, there was that Sunday school I could have gone to, and they'd have learned me that people that acts as I've been acting about that nigger goes to everlasting fire. So what I wants to say is, I'll try to, I won't. I'm sorry if and I, well, I found out one thing. You can't pray a lie. Miss Watson, your runaway nigger Jim is down here, two miles below Pikesville. And Mr. Phelps has got him. And he'll give him up for the reward if you send. Huck Finn. Somehow I just can't seem to strike any hard places against him. All right, I'll go to hell. ain't it? Sure. Oh, Dan! You... Oh, Dan, you... <laughs> yes, um, it's me, all right. Oh, where have you been? Oh. <laughs> oh, you don't look at all as much like your mother's. I thought you were going to, but I don't care about that. Thank you. She grounded. Oh, don't say yes, I'm saying, Sally. Now, where did you go aground? Uh, well, it weren't really the grounding that kept us back. Not really. It was the, uh, a cylinder head would blow. Oh, good gracious, anybody hurt? No, killed a nigger. Well, that's lucky. You know, sometimes people get hurt. Two years ago, last Christmas, your Uncle Silas was coming up from New Orleans on the old Alley Brook, and she blowed a cylinder head and crippled a man. I think he died afterwards. When he was a Baptist. Yes, I remember now. He did die. Mortification set in. He turned blue all over, and he died, hoping for a glorious resurrection. Well, you know, your uncle has been to town every day to fetch you, and he's gone again now, not more than an hour ago, but he'll be back any minute now. You must have passed him on the road, didn't you? Uh, no, ma'am. I didn't see nobody. Well, that's curious. Where's your baggage? I, uh, I left it to town. Oh, child, it's gonna get stole. Not where I hit it. I reckon it won't. Well, here we are running on like this, and you haven't told me one word about sis nor any of them. Now, I'm gonna rest my words for a while, and you just get yours started up, and you just tell me everything. Tell me about all of them. Tell me how they are, what they're doing, and what they told you to tell me. You just tell me everything that comes into your head. <laughs> Why, Tom, what's come over you? Come on now. <laughs> there he is. Oh, he ain't. Oh, he must have come. You just missed him on the road. No, I 
didn't miss him. He ain't come. And I'm getting mighty uneasy. Something happened to the boat, sure. Guess what I got here. It ain't no time for games. Oh, yes. No. It is Tom Sawyer. Oh. <laughs> 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 you little rat. You were just about to tell us all the news about sister and Sid and Mary. <laughs> well, let the boy get his breath, Sally. There's a dinner table for talking. Uh, yes, sir, man, Sally, and I really ought to go and fetch my things. Well, I'll go with you, Tom. Uh, that ain't necessary, sir. I can drive the horse myself. I don't want you taking on no more trouble today on account of me. All right, Tom. I got some business out back to tend to. You hurry back. Yep. Shut him a pat. Look, if you don't believe me, come on, feel him. Come on. Well, I'll be. What on earth are you doing here? Whew, it's a long story, and I ain't got time to start it now. So just let it be. Tom, your Aunt Sally. She thinks I'm you. Well, I reckon I must be willing this can be. But how'd you come to be at Aunt Sally? Climb up here. We'll head back to the farm, and I'll try and tell you on the way. Then we can work out a plan. Get up! didn't know no more than a person's conscience does, I'd poison him. I tell you, Tom, a person's conscience takes up more room than the rest of his insides. And yet it ain't no good, no way. What nonsense you talking, Huck? I know them two rascals. And somehow I feel... Well, I feel it's part my fault that they're being treated so. Something, Tom, uh, you ought to know. Your Uncle Silas, he's got Jim under lock and key. Jim? Miss Watson's Jim? The very one. And uh, I'm going to steal him out of slavery. But I, 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 I know what you're going to say. You're going to say it's dirty and low down and ornery. Well, so it is. And I reckon, well, I reckon I am Pap's son after all. Because low down or no, I'm stealing Jim. Now, 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 say you'll keep mom and not say anything. What's me. this? What's this? Oh, it's my brother Sid, Aunt Sally. We wanted to surprise you and Uncle Silas. Well, I reckon you did. Yeah. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive through thy bounty. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Dear me, we weren't looking for you, Sid, but only Tom. My sister didn't say nothing about anybody coming but him. 
Oh, that's because it weren't intended for anybody but Tom to come. But I begged and begged, and at the last moment, Aunt Polly, she said I could come too. Oh, well, Aunt Mary. How's Mary come? Oh, fine. Fine as ever. Uh, she's still winning those uh, Bible reciting ribbons and being a goody two shoes. <laughs> I've thought about it, Huck, and I've decided I'm going to help you steal Jim out of slavery. What? I don't believe it. Tom Sawyer, a nigger stealer. You're joking, ain't you? No joking. Well, this is too many for me, Tom. You're a respectable boy. Brung up good, with character to lose and all. Not like me. I was brung up to no good. So I reckon... Well, I reckon thievery's all right for me, but for you? It'll be a fine adventure, like the man in the iron mask and the Count of Monte Cristo. Well, I figure we can find out where they're keeping him in the morning and then cook up the right kind of plan. That's where they're keeping him, I want. Now all we gotta do is wait for nightfall. You work your mind and study out a plan to steal Jim. And I'll study out one, too. And we'll take the one we like best. plan is this. We fetch my rat from out of the towhead. Then we steal the key out of the old man's britches. Get Jim out of there. Then we shove off on the river by raft. Hiding daytimes and running nights. The way Jim and I had done before. Now wouldn't that plan work? Work? Oh, well, certainly it'd work. Like rats fighting. But it's too blame simple. There ain't nothing to it. What's the good of a plan that ain't got no more trouble in than that? It's as mild as goose milk. Well, I should hope that we could find a plan that's more complicated than that. But if it works, ain't that the point? If I didn't have no more sense than you, Huck Finn, I'd hold still. Don't I usually know what I'm about? I've read the books, and all the books say it's got to be done a certain way. And that's the way I aim to you. So, what's your plan? We will smuggle in some tools for him to work with. Like a rope ladder. What's he gonna do with a rope ladder? And a white shirt for him to scratch his journal on. A gym cape, right? And I've already filched this here spoon for him. Well, what's the spoon for? To dig himself out with, of course. And ain't these picks and shovels good enough for digging out with? Who oh, ever heard of a prisoner having picks and shovels to dig himself out of jail with? But it's foolish to dig out with a spoon. It'd take forever. It's the right way, the regular way. There ain't no other way that I've heard of, and I've read all the books that gives me any information about these things. They always dig out with spoons, and not through dirt, mind you. Generally, it's through solid rock, and it don't matter if it takes forever. Well, look at one of them prisoners at the bottom dungeon of Castle D. He dug himself out with a spoon, and how long do you reckon it took him? I don't know. Yes. I don't know. A month and a half. Thirty-seven years. And he come out in China. Jim don't know nobody in China. I've had enough of your bookie foolishness, Tom Sawyer. You go on with your magic lamps and you're and you're digging to China and you're writing journals on shirts. I'm taking Jim out and I'm doing it now. But that's not the way. It's my way. Huck, I gotta tell you. Just go on back to bed. Come on, Tom. Come on. Hello, Jim. Come on, Jim. Let's to the raft fast. Ma, Tom, tell my wife, Linda. Tell her that I'm still alive. Get the dogs. Yes. Who's that? Answer me, I'll shoot! Ah! 
Jim! It's just my leg! Don't stop now! Don't fool around here! Ah. Hold still, nigga! Good Lord, I shot Sid! You all right, boy? Yes, sir. Just a flesh wound, but bleeding nicely. Oh, Sid! Hold that nigga! Leave him alone! You ain't got no right! Poor, poor darling, Sid! I'm not Sid. I'm Tom Sawyer. And, uh, I'm only Huck Finn. And he ain't no slave. He's free. Time to get him back to the shed. And we'll ride St. Petersburg. Pick him up. Oh, and go get a, a doctor for this, this boy. Well, Tom, we just heard from your Aunt Polly. It seems that what you told us about Jim was the truth. All the more surprising since you and the truth don't seem to bump into each other very often. My sister said that Miss Watson freed Jim on her deathbed and she sent his freedom papers along with a letter. There. Didn't I tell you had no right to shut him up? We did what was right and proper, Tom. As soon as we got the news, your uncle let him loose this morning. Ah, you sat still, the two of you. <laughs> We've something else to tell you. Uh, my sister was quite candid in what she had to say about you. But I believe that with the right Christian example and the proper training, you could grow up into a tolerable, decent human being. And that's why I'm going to continue to let you call me Aunt Sally. And as soon as the papers come through, Uncle Silas and I are going to adopt you. And <laughs> Tom really will be your cousin. Now, don't scrunch up this boy. Well, uh, that's real kind of you, ma'am. Now, now, let's get Tom into the carriage. We don't want to be late for church. Uh, I'm begging your pardon, ma'am. But I uh, appears to have forgotten the Bible you gave me. I'll just scooch back and get it. And don't forget your hat. me again and I can't stand it. I've been there before. Come on. Wait, 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 Huck, and listen. Listen. Remember when I told you back on Jackson Island what, how I had a hairy breast and what that was a sign of and how I was going to be rich one day? Well, I is. I owns myself now. So I'm going back to St. Petersburg with Ma's Tom, and I'm going to work like a dog, and I'm going to buy my family out to freedom with me. I'm real happy for you, Jim. Well, well, you can go with me. I know. But I figure... I figure I'll head on down to Jones's Landing. Then maybe light out towards engine territory. Don't seem right, us going off in different directions. There's a lot I ain't seen yet, Jim. Come on. You can help me push the raft out in the river. Jim? 
Thank you. I figure if you're, uh, headed back up north, you, uh, best have this to take with you. Is this what says I'm free? Yes, Jim. Free is any creature on earth. 